Disclaimer, classes in Trove are built very much the same, so if you have watched any of my other build guides, then there is quite a lot of things that will repeat itself, but you can bypass those parts by the timestamps in the description. Also, my guides are always updated, so if I was to stop doing YouTube, all my those guides would go away. No misinformation will be out there, and I will always update my videos slash guides. If something major happens to the game content, if something minor changes, it will be in the description. Hello guys! who here back on the video this time around we are doing a build guide for Dracolite. yeah so the intro is going to be very much the same as if you've seen it before you can skip ahead to maybe the demo or something else but yes the intro is going to be different just with the which class we are going to do basically just telling you if this is your first time watching one of these build guides what you can expect from the video so as you can see right here i did make it into chapters also indicated by uh, timestamps which is in the description or on the video and first we are going to start with a five minute demo just showcasing the class what abilities do it have kind of just showing off not going into detail what they basically do but just showing them off and maybe that will interest you at making one of these classes one of your mains after that we are going to do a quick look at overall stats for the every single class so for this class that you're watching right here we're going to do it for that one and also in general we are going to talk about stats for example like crit hit and crit damage that's going to be some generalization right there and then we are going to move into gear and everything there's on the gear page that is of course banners allies head face weapon <laughs> and also rings and food emblems flash so on so on. everything there is in the gear uh, page we are going to go over that one as well then we are going to cover gems mostly we're going to cover the empowered gems of course we're also going to talk a little bit about the smaller ones but mostly we are going to go into the big empowered ones or the big gems that is and then for lastly of course as you can see right here on the screen we're also going to talk about the star chart or the talent tree as i basically call it so that's what the intro was all about, just letting you know what the chapters are and how it is going to work with the timestamp. So you can skip ahead if there's something you already watched, you can skip ahead to doing that, or you can basically uh, watch it all if you feel like you want to do that. But that was the intro, now we can jump into the demo.
All right, so after demo here, we are going to take a deeper dive into the Dracolite. I know a few people have been waiting for this one because this is the only character I have sort of perfect and I put it in uh, quotations because I know there's some people out there that's probably gonna, you know, look into it and being like, eh, well, it's not completely 100% and all that stuff because you don't have this and that. Uh, of course, I'm not gonna show all of the, especially the min-maxing things that goes in all these, each of the gems, but I will link into the description if if you want to see the sheet there is a I wouldn't call it a cheat sheet I was about to say cheat sheet but it's a sheet uh, that somebody has made that kind of puts everything for all the classes and whatnot into 100% where it has to be and people are way smarter at that stuff but I have perfected as much as I wanted to perfect my character and my character took a can do whatever, it can do U11, that's what you saw before in the demo. Of course, there's always deeper in the delves if you want to go, but of course this can do uh, deeps of, uh, you know, Crystal 4 gear. That's of course, cause I do have, oh, that's not, I do have Crystal 4 gear and that's where I got it from. So it can do that as well. So I really don't feel like the need to go into more extremes of where it's gonna be. And also the information that's in the sheet, I don't 100% understand. I, so I am just going to go with what I know and you know, you can go to the description and you can click that and if you understand that, you can build your characters like that. But we are gonna at least talk about the uh, skills that the Dragolite do have, which is of course the dragon type. <laughs> I guess you can call it like that, right? So of course we do have the uh, Dracolite, which of course burns the enemies for the passive. Uh, that's not really, does, it doesn't do extreme damages or anything like that. It's just sort of a little addition. And also it's, it's not immune to lava and stuff, but it gets extra movement speed uh, when it's moving through a lava actually. So we do have our little Spitfire, that's a little guy up here. Now it looks like a pinata because of the skin, right? But it's a big little dragon thing that you basically, when you deal damage to thing, it kind of gets fat. You get it, feed it up, and then you uh, release that with your second mouse button there, if that's if you're playing on PC, of course, and does extra damage. It actually does relatively good damage, but usually things die pretty quickly, and you're not really using it at all. Uh, so we, of course, got our uh, bombs here. Uh, that's also where the class gym comes in. I'll talk more about that when we get a little further in. But of course it makes an explosion, but it also does a knockback as well. So it's kind of a little bit annoying. You saw that in the video as well, that it does that, uh, you know, knockback as well for enemies. So I usually I don't use it. Uh, mostly I just use the ultimate, which is the ultimate. You go into dragon form for 15 seconds and then you do uh, more damage, you heal uh, more movement speed as well. Uh, and also you take reduced damage as well. And you can have this up pretty like I wouldn't say all the time, but pretty close to all the time. You won't really need to have any shenanigans with uh, you cooldown reduction and stuff like that. Yes, it is a powerful form, but if you are doing bosses, uh, you rather just have some other stuff going for you. Uh, also, the Draco babies that spawn from your uh, little bomb here when you have the Clash Gym it does amazing damage as well for the prolongers of the fight. The longer the fight goes, the better it basically does. And also, why I like the Dracolite is that it also becomes kind of naturally tanky, not only with the ultimate, but basically with just being sort of a, a melee uh, mage, if you can call it like that, because it is a magic damage user. Uh, I feel like it's not the best, of course it's not the best bossing characters out there. It's not the best farmer either. There's other classes again to shine in those two regions, which is basically the only regions you have, but uh, the Draco does fairly well in both of them. It's not gonna be the best in one of them. I feel like most of the classes there's out there, that's also why I like the Draco, is that the Draco is not like, again, not the best at bossing, not the best at farming, but it does very well in both categories where other classes I feel like does very well in one or the other. So I just feel like the Dragon Light is a good choice to have as an in-game character because it does very well in both of them. So you don't have to switch around. And it's it's not as big of a problem as it was before because now you can just switch your gems for free. But in the, in the old times, the old times, right? <laughs> Uh, it actually costs something to change your gems uh, to other classes and such. So that's where you sort of had a main. Right now, you don't really need a main. You just need a name, you know, a physical damage set uh, of gems and gear uh, for your other, one character and then one for, you know, magic as well. So with that said, let's talk about some 
subclasses. Subclasses I go with the knight mostly because of the movement speed because uh, the dragon don't really have any movement speed you know other than what you get from your gear and stuff like that but doesn't have abilities like that and it kind of feels nice and does that for all melee classes or other all classes that are pretty close to the enemies. Movement speed it just feels better you know the range they don't really care about movement speed in that sense because you know they are always in sort of in range right or at least the enemies are coming to you right and the same thing of course if you are melee but if it kind of runs away you kind of like to have that movement speed just to keep up with it because as you can see if i'm running and I, if i you can see i'm going slower when i'm actually attacking so i get more movement speed when i'm not attacking but when i start attacking you know you're going slower than that and of course that also helps with your ultimate again having that extra movement speed it's not insane I, I can show you guys you can see this is the movement speed i'm going right now and now you can see i'm going on you can't really see the difference it is going a little bit faster but it's not insane stuff basically but with the movement speed stuff you are going to make that go a little bit faster. But you can go with any subclass you do uh, want to for the Dracolite. I would recommend the Knight. Uh, the, uh, what's it called? The Lunar Lancer is also pretty nice. You do get a damage reduction with it, but you get physical damage with that. Uh, you can choose one of the other ones that do get, you know, some magic damage if that's one of your higher ones, like level or power rank. But the Lunar Lancer can also be used, but it, again, the Dracolite does not benefit from attack speed. So I wouldn't really go with the Lunar Lancer. Usually Lunar Lancer is pretty, um, either the Knight or the Lunar Lancer is pretty good choices. Here again, I just would just go with the Knight. You really don't have many other chances or uh, choices. Maybe the Solarian, but the Solarian, I don't really recommend the Solarian because it's kind of hard to come by knowing one of the newer classes. Maybe in a couple of years when I redo all these, uh, you know, what's it called, guides, right? I will probably recommend the Solarian because then everybody probably has it. It's probably been, I don't know if it's going to ever be reduced in price. Uh, we haven't seen that with the Vanguardian, which has been around for a very long time, right? We haven't seen reduction to that. Um, so, but yeah. You can go with anything you basically want. If you like missing some crit hit and that's your like highest character for the Tomb Raider, just go with that. But yeah, you can go with anything you really want. Again, I would just mostly recommend this. Like if you really want a min max, you really want to go with the knight, in my opinion, at least. You can play around with it, whatever you feel like. It, um, you shouldn't just you know take my word of advice. You should play around it and feel what your play style is the best. All right, let's move on to the uh, gear stuff. Let's head into our helmet. And here, of course, you want to get uh, movement speed. Uh, you want to get crit damage and you want to get max health. You can also go with magic find. But again, magic find is great and stuff, but it's not really a lot you are going to get out of it. Uh, it's going to be a nice chunk if you're also using Patreon, of course, but I would just go with the max health here because uh, we don't need the crit hit. I'll show you guys that as well because of the crystal gems. But uh, movement speed is just very nice when you're moving right. Like I said, if you don't have it, you are basically moving very slowly around. And if the enemy run around, you have to stop attacking and then... You know, you basically have to, you know, it doesn't, it's not a big deal to stop attacking, right? But it's like, you kind of just want to hold that button down and just like follow them and do, do the damage. And yeah, not, not like being sort of chasing them around like that. So I do like the movement speed. Also, again, the drag like do not benefit from the uh, attack speed. Again, one of the reasons why I do like uh, characters that, it's not that I don't like characters that has attack speed, but attack speed is a is a nice, really nice stat to have, but you have to sacrifice some other stuff, and usually it's movement speed you have to sacrifice for that. And you, of course, then the Dragonite do not benefit from attack speed. It might do that in the future. They might rework it. That's what it actually works for it. But the thing is, you are sacrificing something else for getting that attack speed. And yes, you want the damage as well, but you also want the movement speed. It's like... For the Dracolite, for example, that's again feeling, I <laughs> feel like I'm kind of talking like a bro broken record here, like a, uh, an ad for the Dracolite, to play the Dracolite, but movement speed, any of the classes that don't really need um, too many stats, right? I feel like those are the best ones to go into because you, can, you don't really sacrifice anything uh, and they kind of compensate for not doing that. All right, so let's go into our... Uh, staff here uh, again I went with a critical damage I went with a crit hit here because that was actually what I was missing and then I also went with movement speed as well on this one and before I said I don't need any critical hit but actually this is the only place that I actually need it I could also get it from my 
Uh, I could actually also get it from my ring. Uh, you could get it. You could get a you know energy region here if you want to, or you can get an energy region here and then critical hit on one or the other if you really want to do so. You do need a little bit of crit uh, energy region. Uh, it, it is very nice to have the uh, you know the Draculites up all the time. But with the uh, I'll show you guys that with the stats in a little bit with the dragons that I do have and with the energy region I have on my ring here or on my weapon I am I do have my you know basically my Draco babies up all the time so uh, they do basically cancel out themselves you, I think you can have like five or six of them at a, up at a time and you can see that you can basically test that yourself by. Uh, spawning the Draculite babies and see if you have like a bunch of them and some of them disappear before their health basically runs out. Basically they have like a, it, basically their health bar is also their timer so you can see it on the health bar. So if they disappear before the health bar runs out that means that you have what you basically need to spawn them all the time. But if you have enough energy regen that your uh, Draculite uh, babies or Draco babies basically die before like they have lost like half their health or something like that then you should probably turn down the energy regen and then sort of uh, min max it a little bit like that where you are they are basically disappearing right before they actually should have died and then you have you know those running all the time it can be kind of hard to hit exactly there but yeah, you should just get some, uh, you know, uh, around that. But that's you can play around with that as well. So then we, of course, we got ourselves the face. Again, movement speed, magic damage is you. You absolutely need magic damage here. There's no other choice. And then, of course, you want the critical damage. It's not really a lot of choices for, you know, because, again, attack speed do not work for the Dragonite. You see that in the stats in a little bit. But, yeah, you don't want that. Uh, you don't want anything but the movement speed so that also makes it kind of a nice class for that as well and we talked about the ring this is also the only crystal four ring that i got and i got energy regen so i was like all right i'll keep this but you can also get critical hit and then have you know other way around whatever you feel like you want to the most important thing is just to hit that 100 so um yeah you should just play around with it if you get another crystal four ring right with magic damage on maybe with whatever also jumps can be a thing um but you really want, if you want to do damage, you really don't need to do, have that many jumps. Uh, I do have a bunch of jumps as well. Now I can show you guys the banner that you want. This is your 10 banner. This is the only one I have. I got it after my sixth Leviathan kill. And I really don't like the way that the Leviathans have, uh, is, is structured. So I never really do them. Uh, so I think I have like about 50 now or something like that. And I was just then. I just don't like the structure of how the, uh, you know, Leviathans are. I've talked about that many times. But what you want is the light, of course, that's on it. We want magic damage and a flash capacity. And again, the movement speed is just very, very nice. You can also go with some health regen if you want to be a little tankier. But you're going to sacrifice your magic damage, which I would really not recommend you doing. It's just better to be a glass cannon. And we have 3.3 million uh, life. So uh, you don't really need to, uh, you know... Uh, any more health regen and stuff like that there was actually a time where you could also get health regen on gems and stuff like that pretty fun but uh they changed that of course but yeah you want to use of course uh, the this uh, u10 banner for uh this one with the fast capacity and the movement speed moving on to the ally you want to use your uh, orchin here uh you can also go uh with the star chart it's a little bit down here you can't see it from my big fat face but there is a few other ones you can get from the, uh, the star chart and basically this one is could also be a very nice choice. I did went with the movement speed. Uh, if you, if you are doing bosses, if you like really just doing if you're doing bosses, it does, doesn't take very long to change this one into this one or other way around. But the cooldown recovery is very nice for your ultimate. So I would definitely go with this one if you have access to it. But this one is so much easier to get than this one, at least in my opinion. Uh, so you can get this one pretty easily uh, just through, you know, Paragons. And this is a, for a star chart, one of the, the out of edges and stuff like that. But this is better for doing bosses for sure. Um, this one is a little bit better for farming if you really want to. And it doesn't take very long to just switch this one out. I don't really feel there's anything else you need to change to do bosses. But this one does give you some cooldown recovery, which basically you can have this up a little bit more and do that extra damage as well. So if you are doing bosses, you like big bosses and stuff like that. This is definitely something you want to change. Just to quickly go to there and have this one favorite and then click this one, this one. Then you're good to go and have that extra cooldown because there's not going to be uh, needed for the movement speed boost. And yeah, again, you're not going to be speedy as farming either. So if you're using this 
for your uh, farming as well you know for, for dungeons and stuff like that this is very good choice as well and then moving on to our flask we are using the death defying flask you can go with some of the other ones uh, i wouldn't really recommend anyone it, there is the one that gives you one when you would your basically your magic find uh, has a chance when you cover a charge from that you can also have the one that every time you crit because you're going to have 100% crit uh so yeah uh that you're gonna have a chance every single time i don't know what the proc chance is but you are gonna have a hundred percent chance to have a chance to getting one of these so it's not a guarantee just because you have a hundred percent so i would go with the death defying you also going to be very much in like really melee range of the enemies and the bosses and stuff like that so you are going to be in the thicker of it if you can say it like that and that's actually going to you know be a little bit risky to be in there so if you don't like trust yourself to have these uh, fast fingers and actually, you know, healing that potion up uh, when you need to. Uh, I would really use the death defying uh, flask as well. You do get enough uh, flask capacity, I feel. You can again go with some more, you get 18 here. I would get eight more flask capacity. I can actually just click this one really quick. You can see now I have 37 of these, but again, I would have to uh, hit them myself if I wanted to. And 29 is if enough because we also going to use the bountiful emblem and the arcane one so let's start with the arcane one first the arcane one is one of the most important ones again with the martial one that i've talked about in the other videos as well i'm going to mention every single video because these are just like mandatory for all the classes either you are physical damage or you are magic damage user and we are magic damage users so this is one we want to use and I'm using the Bountiful. It's not one of the people people talk too much about the Bountiful, but basically it has a chance of not consuming a charge. And I really like that because when the Death Defying procs itself, it has a chance of not consume one and also has a chance when you yourself use it, uh, the flask, you are also going to get that as well. But there's other choices. There is the sure strike if you don't have 100% crit hit. Uh, you can use that one. Of course, over 80%, this becomes less and less uh, Oh, worse and worse that's what i mean uh, over time uh, getting to that 100 percent and then of course you can also use some of the allies i feel like they're just a little the ai is not the super the best they do a good damage but i feel like sometimes they're just kind of clunky and stuff like that i just rather have this one where i have i would say more control of it it is a chance to not consume so it's not something i control of but i feel like it's more in my uh, favor that in then the uh, allies as well but that's really up to you what you want to do so you can do some of these you can use the chrono man hugely if you really want to have your ultimate up the, all the time but it's a very low, low cooldown anyways and if you're using that other ally you're, you're basically having up a lot of so you maybe you might be using some stuff and whatnot but yeah i would use maybe also the unwilling if you want to do so that, that gives you a shield so you don't like Go through your uh, flask too fast if you are taking a lot of damage. But other than that, I would, there's not really anything I would go for other than the Arcane and Bountiful if you have access to it. But the um, Martial and the Arcane one, the Martial and the Arcane, Arcane one, <laughs> that's hard to say, is of course from the store, from the in-game currency somewhere. I can't remember where you buy. Oh, they were there. Actually, they were there. Right there. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, you can see they are right here. And they are, co they are cost in-game currency. Uh, so don't worry. It's not going to cost you something. Uh, so that's kind of funny. The most op Some of the most OP stuff is actually just from the in-game store. <laughs> but, yeah, that's basically all the gear you want to get. We'll talk about the gems in a little bit. But I also need to show you guys the stats that I do have. So I have about almost 700,000 uh, magic damage. Uh, I'm missing a little bit on the star chart yet. I'm missing seven more of the uh points i'm missing seven points at this point seven points at this point <laughs> but i'm almost at 700 000 magic damage as well again you want some energy regen you will get a little bit of course either from your ring or from your weapon if you want to do so but you get a plenty of it uh, i can guess i can just really quickly just take this off if it would work there we go uh so i would have around uh, 177 energy regen uh, just by having the dragons that I do have I don't have energy regen any other place so that is from there as well so energy regen is about 400 I would I would aim for that because that's what I feel like I have kind of you know min max it too but you really have to feel it out if you want to do so as well uh, I have movement speed, of course, attack speed. Again, you can see I do have attack speed from my, uh, you know, dragons that I do have and whatnot. 
uh, but you can see it's still at zero even though the base is 182 and then i also have a bonus of three percent but it's because it doesn't work it's up down to that zero i have 62 jumps from also all the dragons that i do have so I have, i'm only missing one dragon uh that's really uh, you know needed so and i do have 62 jumps so that's fairly that that's gonna be enough to to do so and you can see i'm at 100 percent critical hit i'm very close 0.2 percent off the uh, critical hit here uh again if i took off my weapon i was actually gonna be under and the, the gems that i've played around with as well uh the the closest i got to uh, was to get it from here uh that was gonna put me at least over 102 i was very surprised that it was gonna hit 100 percent and it would be so cool if it was just like 100 percent straight out but at some point it is going to change because they're going to change you know items and stuff like that maybe someday we'll get crystal 5 gear or even a higher we are of course getting a higher tier at some point we are going to get new gear that's just how mmos works right we are going to get new gear something new to chase right so this is going to change and then yeah of course it changed with the crystal gems as well i'm almost at 3000 critical damage so i'm almost doing like i don't, I don't know if it's like 30, 30 times more damage or it's like three times more damage i don't know how it really works in that but i'm almost at, i'm at 20 uh, core efficiency this is of course a mod that i got as well and then of course i'm a thousand light i'm at maximum light at this point here i i can get i can get a little bit more there's a few allies that gives light and stuff like that but this is sort of the max because yes light is one of the most important stats you can get in trove but you do not have you shouldn't sacrifice your critical damage uh Critical hit should always hit around a little bit over 100%. That's okay, like 1, 2, 3%. That's fine. Uh, you want to get as close. You don't want to be under because you want to have all your hits be crits, even if it's at like 99%. But you want to get as close to 100%. So don't don't think it's don't get discouraged if you are at 99%. And it's like you're gonna have to put something where you get up to 105%. Then sure, 99% is also almost 100%. So just get as close to 100% as you can get. But you don't want to skimp on your critical damage and your magic damage or physical damage if you're a physical damage character. You don't want to gimp on these because yes, if you have like let's say you had a million light right, but you had like zero magic damage and you had zero critical critical uh, damage right. Sure, you would all your crits will still be uh, all your hits will still be crits, but you will still do no damage if your magic damage is zero, right? You could have as much light as you want, but you still don't do any damage if you don't have any magic damage in any critical damage. But of course, you do have to have that light to get through their armor or that dark, as it's actually called. But again, you don't want to skip out on your magic damage. You don't want to skip out on your critical damage either. And you don't want to, of course, skip out on your light. But uh, it's sort of a balance to get all of it as or this fight. So with that said, we can move on from stats and we can move into our gems. And I do want to say that the uh, Clash Gem is like 90% re like needed. Uh, if you're doing bosses and stuff, you can... Uh, you should 100% get your Draco babies, as we call them, uh, because they do amazing damage uh, over a longer time. As you probably saw in the demo, usually I just pop my ultimate in U11 here because I have enough damage now to just like auto attack enemies down. It takes too long to actually like have them spawn because you have to throw them down and do some damage to them and then they explode. Well, you can wait out the timer on them, but they do the timer goes down faster uh, before they explode if you hit damage on them. Uh, it would take even longer if you did run out the timer, but you do have to do damage to them before they spawn and then they have to do damage. And of course, they, after that, they kind of in, in, die instantly, but it's just a lot easier for me. And I feel like it's just to auto attack them down and pop my uh, ultimate uh, once in a while when I have it up and just uh, defeat enemies like that. But if you're doing bosses, you're doing deep, deep delves and stuff like that, you do need, of course, your uh, burning ward, as it's called, the clash gym for this one. And you want to go with magic damage and critical damage. Here again, you can play around with the critical hit depending on what your gems are. These all gems that I do have on this one is perfect, uh, both on stats and on uh, everything. Basically, all of them is 100%. Uh, you want to go, of course, uh, with the critical damage and the magic damage. Again, you can change it around so you hit that close to that 100%. There's a few gems. I'll show you guys that in a little bit. Some of them are around there. So, But this one I changed into maximum health. You have to play around with it because you maybe not have the same dragons that I do have. And maybe you don't have the same critical hit. So I can't really say, hey, you should always get 
this on your class gem, for example, or the other one on the other one, right? You have to play around it with it yourself, but the class gem do what it does is that it spawns those mini Draco minions, as they call, and they do a lot of damage to uh, like a longer fight and such. So for farming, you don't really need it. So if you have something else like a like a pyro disc as well, could also be very nice because you are in range and also gives you movement speed. The pyro disc itself doesn't do very much damage, but it gives you a movement speed and it does do a little bit of damage. So everything helps right in the end. So, of course, I also went with the cube, and the cube is very nice in that sense that it does give you a shield, so avoid a little bit of that damage. But again, you can also go with the Pyro Disc here if you want to do uh, that extra damage, but it's not very good for bosses. Pyro Disc is not very good for bosses because you need to have something die. You have to kill something for it to proc. So, and you really don't, bosses don't run around that much. You really don't have to do like kiting or anything like that. So, you really don't need the movement speed for killing bosses. Uh, I talked about having movement speed before, but uh, you know, it's it's just movement speed is, you know, if it was attack speed, if it worked with attack speed, we would just go attack speed, oh, right? We wouldn't go movement speed. But uh, this cube does help you a little bit and take some damage down sometimes. It's not amazing, uh, but you can also go with a stinging curse or something like that, which if you want to build up something like that. But I just feel like the cube sometimes takes a few hits and it just feels kind of nice but you do want the explosive the explosive is very nice as well it procs on everything so you definitely want the explosive as well because when you kill something it explodes it's just amazing and yes we do have some aoe sort of in the bombs but it's not that insane so you want to just go with the explosive here as well uh, and then we got of course this one we got the uh vampiric uh, that is just the one you need because basically it's always a battle, uh, not, no pun intended, but a battle through between the Berserking bat of the Berserking Berserker Battler, the Battler Berserker, the one that gives you attack speed and light. And sure, uh, the uh, the Dracolite will still benefit from the light from the Battler if you really want to do so. And you might want to go with that one if you're really going down deep delves and you really need a lot of light, then you basically should maybe get the Battler, but you would not benefit from the attack speed that you do get from the battler. So I'm going with the Vampiric because that heals, of course, when you deal a critical hit to the enemy and also increases your uh, movement speed. But yeah, you basically are uh, leeching here on this one here. So I feel like this one is a lot better, but I really, it's really up to you what you want to use. It, it, either it's the battler or the Vampiric. So if you have the battler equipped, just use that one, but try the Vampiric if you get one as well with that one. So again, this one has some max health. I think this one has max health. This one has max health. This one has also max health. This one does not. This one has not. Also, the other one do have that. But again, you should play around with it. It's always, sort of always the gem should look like this, where you have critical damage and you have magic damage and then critical hit as well. I'll show you guys in a little bit over at the gym forge kind of how they kind of work together. But that's basically all that there is with the gem. So let's go over here to the gym forge. So here over here, I can show you guys where I kind of put all my stuff so for my light gems or my cosmic gems, uh, you want to put those extra buffs here. You want to put them into your, uh, always in your light stat for these. Uh, you can go with the other ones as well if they are and you don't really have anything to move them around with, it's fine. But over time, you really want it to get into all the light stuff. That's always what you want with all your uh, cosmic gems for all your classes. And then I go with the critical damage and the magic damage. Again, you can mix match with also critical hit if you want to. If you're missing some there, it's okay to go with some critical hit. It's just very important to very first get your 100% crit hit. That is the most important thing to do. And whatever way you can get it, it's just fine. And then over time, you can change it as well. And then, of course, uh, you can see this is what I did with some of the other ones. I never want to put it on here. Uh, again, you can also maybe if you're missing like... 0.1% and this one, if you move it over here, gets you that 0.1% and that's your 100%, right? That is great, you know, that doesn't matter, but usually if you have max health or max health percentage, you definitely do not want to have any of your extra ones in here. And that's what the cheat, the, the cheat sheet, I was about to say, the sheet in the description tells you like where should these really be? Should it be on the critical damage? Should it be on the magic damage and so forth and so forth? So yeah, that's sort of just always what they want to go in here too. And again, you can play around with it. What if you want more magic damage or you want more critical damage as well? So that's what they do, all of them, these. And if you're wondering, just a little side note, wondering how do you obtain these little extra things and yours do not have that, that means that either your gem is not level 15 
or it started with like more less than three stats. So for gems, any gem, both the big ones and the small ones, you always just want to start with three stats on them. Doesn't really matter what the power rank is of them, just as long as they have three stats and you want to equip those. And when you get to five, you get one of these and to 10, you get another one. And then with 15, you get three. So you can check your gems if they are over 15 and they only have two of these, for example, or just one of them. That means it started with uh, not three stats because when it hit 15, it either gives you a stat or it gives you one of these. So keep that in mind when you are uh, playing basically to check them if they are uh, that. And if they're not, you can just replace them with other ones at some point. And, and use them as that. But yeah, that's all there is with the Draclite. But of course, uh, we covered the gear, we covered the gems, but we still haven't covered the star chart, which is coming up right here. All right, first up, we got the magic damage tree. I sort of gave them all names, and this is the magic damage path, as I call it. And out here is where there's red circles. This is where there is going to be some new white want to get really old you know those that you really want to go for the green ones are okay but kind of there's not really anything between them there is a little bit down here but there's really nothing between them. these two over here are red because uh, there's two great good notes over here and could be a path that you want to go after you go through the basically the magic damage part and then also the critical damage part as well and you really want to go down here because there's also like a 15 damage right down here in the bottom if you can see it right down there there's a 15 percent magic damage winch is pretty crazy as well because you do have to go out either this way or this way after uh, over here is the uh, magic find and the kind of the uh, magic find an xp path and uh, that's okay as well uh, you do need those you know xp for if you're leveling up or doing paragon and stuff like that but the red ones are sort of mandatory for a uh, magic damage you can go whatever you want if you want to do so but uh, these are definitely the note that increases and has some impact as a magic damage user so as you can see you can you can also pause the video if you want to and just kind of check all the things out if you want to do so which ones are you going to go for and which ones are pretty nice to have but it's not really a lot of good notes leading up to it so if you had let's say you had you could get all the notes or at least everything all the green ones and all the red ones then you should definitely also go for the green ones as well. The green one up here has some magic, not sorry, magic attack speed. That's why it's up here. Usually not many, uh, you know, uh, magic damage users, like for example, Draglite don't use, uh, you know, attack speed, but like a Gunslinger or is Ice Age, for example, those use it. So that's why it's up here. But there might be some a little bit better notes down here. And if you... I'd rather have 15% magic damage than like a little bit of attack speed because it's not really a lot of attack speed you get out of this note here. And there's some good ones in between as well if you want to get those as well. Um, but basically you want to go through all of the magic. So yeah, this is the damage, uh, magic damage part if you can say it like that. But this is what I think at least you should be aware of these notes. That's it for the video. Click the video on screen that's coming up right now. YouTube thinks you might like it. Also check out the description for all my ultimate guides that goes into more specific things in Trove. And also hit that like button would help me out very, very much. Also consider subscribing and that's it. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.